uh, I'd like to show you how to get started with Rue Commander. So I'll assume you've got VS Code and Rue Code already installed and you have a folder for the workspace. So under File, Open Folder, you have to make like a folder for VS Code to work in. So the simplest way I can suggest you to get started is to head to the Rue Commander GitHub repo, <clears throat> go to releases and click on whatever is the most recent release, <clears throat> and find the file that's like Rue Commander and the version number, and we need to download that. So it's a zip file, so it'll save to Know, whatever wherever your download save to and we need to open that so we can extract the files from that folder so you should end up with something like this and these are the folders for uh, for Rue Commander so we want to move or extract I guess um, you don't actually need change log and readme, I'll have to get rid of those. So you need all these files, the room modes and all these ones. Uh, some of those folders are for future planning, but anyway, just grab them all and extract that to your um, root, root commander folder. So the way you unzip those files will differ by operating system, if you're not sure how to do that, you most likely need to drag the files from the zip folder into the folder you created for VS Code and Rue Code to work. And if that all happened, you should end up with something that looks like this. And this file here, the Rue modes, so this is where most of the magic happens. So these are all of the custom um, jobs or modes for Rue Commander. And if that's working, we should be able to click on prompts and click on the project modes. And that, that will be like that file there. So um, at the moment, that's all of the all of the modes, uh, and it's ordered approximately by seniority. Okay, so like root commanders at the top. You will need to have uh, at least one API set up. So like you can use Open Router or Requesty or Gemini, or whatever. Um, I usually use, at the moment, use Gemini, the 2.5 Pro EXP, uh, but you can use whatever you like. Uh, you will find that Rue Commander is not the most token efficient of mode sets. So if you're super clever and know all about coding, you probably don't need to use Rue Commander, because you know what you're asking for, and you can use a more minimalist set. But Rue Commander is intended to be a very easy, kind of like not so technical person's ability to use it, right? Like I'm not a web developer, I run a website business and I can build websites in WordPress. I cannot code like a classic web dev person can. Um, so the settings in here will depend a bit on which AI you're using, but um, you'll, you'll have to figure that out depending on your settings. And there's plenty of guides in the, the Ruco documentation. So this is not about configuring Ruco. This is just, that's what I've got set up at the moment. So we want to choose Ruco Commander. And uh, as I say, Gemini is the one I've been using mostly lately as of April 2025. So now you're ready to start doing something 
with Recommander, building something, building a website, whatever. But um, so just to be clear, the installing is unzipping the files for the latest version and putting them in the project folder so that it looks something like that. And that's the beginning. Now, the Roo rules, these are the workspace rules, so it's like the overall rules. And then there's rules for each mode. So for example, if we come down here, excuse me, there's the Roo Commander rules file, and you can see it's got its individual rules files. And these are like the instructions that it follows, right? The, the other folders, you don't have to know too much about them, but um, I guess these are specific to uh, Roo Commander, which is the workflows, which is if you build a workflow, like a sequence of steps, uh, it can be saved in there. There are templates for things um, like different kinds of documents so that um, Roo can try and keep on to the same standard. Uh, it all, all uses the uh, TOML, T-O-M-L, Tom's obvious markup language as much as possible. <clears throat> Processes are when like if you make a standard process. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll try and do other videos to explain that in more detail. But uh, once you get there, you can just say like, hey Roo, if you could spell that would be good too, hey Roo. And that should engage Roo Commander and you can have a chat about what it is that you want to do. So it will ask you if you haven't given any direction what you feel like doing. So you know, we've got a new existing project or a new feature or you know, something else that you want to do. Um, and, and you could just say something as simple as like, I'd like to build a one page HTML website for a bakery called Bob's Bakery. And the, the questions and answers you get should be contextually relevant. So it is not a strict like railroad it tries to take what you give it and use that to give you an outcome. So if I'd said something like, you know, push some changes to Git, then it should do something about that, not start a new project. So, um, I'll just quickly go through a, a, a couple of steps. So all of this logic, it's not pre-programmed. This is uh, kind of, Rucode has um, been configured to try and make independent decisions about what you want to do. And so it's taken us through from Roo code to onboarding and now we're in the one shot web designer. Uh, I would probably suggest that the design modes would be better on something either a higher temperature Gemini, so like up to one on the temperature or um, you know something like Claude Sonnet. You, you won't get creative outcome by just uh, using the default settings because the thing called the temperature with the AI, which is like how creative it is with its answers or how prone it is to kind of make things up, um, it's like a quite I think it's like zero or as low as possible basically on um, like it's intended to be low by default on root code so you don't get mistakes in your code however you know if you don't want to design the world's most boring websites well you need to give it some idea of what to do and probably turn the temperature up on your model so when I say the temperature when you're in settings, whatever your AI is, you can choose use custom temperature, which will be default to zero, but you can pump it up. So for example, if we, um, uh, if we made like 
another version of this. So Gemini uh, temp 1.0. So, if we then change the temperature to, I'm not even have to go the way to 1.85. Okay, so we've made a custom profile now that's got that temperature. And if we go into the modes and we'll do one shot web designer, <coughs> and we're going to choose the higher temperature one there. Okay. So just do the same prompt again. Excuse me. Um, let's just grab that. <coughs> Try and repeat the process, eh? So we just say, hey, Rue. Excuse me. Uh, I probably know I've opened some files, so. Uh, let's call it Barry's Bakery. Okay. Okay, so it's handed me off to the onboarding mode. Uh, we don't really want it to be on that for that. There we go. Uh, we shouldn't really be using the high temperature just for the onboarding mode. Not, I mean, you could probably won't make any difference really, but um, yeah, let's just do that. And hopefully, this time around, it might be a bit more creative. Um, admittedly, we didn't really give it much to work with. <laughs> so, um, I'm not expecting miracles. But I do think this time around we should get something that resembles a website a bit more creatively, hopefully. I mean, it's looking better already just by looking at the HTML. So we shall see. <clears throat> Looks promising. More colors, more fonts. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's still not exciting, but you can see just in that difference of increasing the temperature to 0 0.85, how much more it looks like an actual website. Um, anyway, just a quick example. I uh, hope it is useful to you. Thank you.